Saints, Prophet of the Dawn of Ryan, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner here. I haven't spoken to you in ages. You know, I've, I want to first say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, I'm doing this video on Sunday, so I am going to load it up on Monday. So let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit here. Father, we just thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice in it and be glad in it, Father. Father, I ask you to help me to speak, Lord, to your people. We just come against all distractions right now. In Jesus' name, that your word shall go forth, Lord, touching hearts and touching lives, Lord. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We just yield ourselves to you and ask you to work to us however you want to. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Now I want to read you this poem to all the moms. I wrote this poem back in 2005. Um, I wrote it, um, dedicating it to my mother who passed away on May 7th, 1986. It's been a long time now. You know, maybe you're, you don't have a mother and your mom passed away, or maybe you've had an abortion. I want you to know God loves you. It doesn't matter, you know, what you've been through. Uh, the enemy will tell you that God does not love you or God does love you. And um, maybe you feel all alone, you feel depressed, and maybe you miss your mom that passed away. You know, um, God's your mother, he's your father. You know, he's everything to me. You know, I don't have much family. You know, my husband is with me, and my dad lives up in Chicago. But I have no family here. Um, God is my everything. So I want to read you this poem. It's called A Mother's Heart. Mother's hearts are filled with love. They are so big and hold blessings from above. Take the key, unlock their heart, and you will see. Their children arise and say, you are blessed for all you do this day. A mother helps when she can. She cooks, cleans, and picks up your mess. A mother is always there to lend a hand. Enjoy your mother while you're together. She is a friend that will not last forever. Amen. You know, God is, he's good, you know. That's why I would tell you, appreciate your mom. Your mom is here one minute and gone the next. So make, make time for your mom. Maybe you you um, don't get along with your mom. Maybe you've had a bad past. And that, you know, be the first one to go to your mom and apologize. Even if you feel you were not wrong. You know, patch it up. Make, make it right with God. Because you never know when the last day is going to be for your mom. And you're not going to see her again. You know, so I just wanted to, to share that with you. Um, you know, I, I'm asking you all to please keep me in your prayers. And, you know, I've been still going through a lot. God's in control. You know, I, not just me. I know there are a lot of saints that are going through th trials right now. And there are distractions. The enemy is distracting them. And um, I've got messages I want to speak. And I haven't been able to do them yet. But hopefully soon God will have me speak you know I I want to share this with you you know I, I, I shared it with you earlier and um, this was a message I had read off of Elijah list but I'm just gonna read you this one portion because God when I was reading this part stood out and it was like the Holy Spirit spoke to me so loudly and it, it just touched my heart and made me cry and this is what he said to me because as I read it I was crying in tears 
It's called the fulfillment of your highest destiny starts now. And it, he said here, you are too important to the whole scheme of things. Do you understand? It's not just about your destiny. It's about all of us. You are part of the whole. You are part of the big plan. We need you. We can't do this without you. And that's the same for you saying, you know, maybe you feel that you're not important to what God has called you to do. Yes, you are. The enemy wants to tell you, no, you're not. And that God doesn't have anything for you. And maybe you're waiting and waiting and waiting. You're like, when God, when? You know, God has a time and his ways are not our ways. So we have to just keep trusting in the Lord. No, I'm, I wasn't going to read this, but I feel led that, that God wants me to, to read this to you. Um, I read this off of our daily bread. It's, it's called more than just waiting. Let me get my glasses on. It says, police charge a woman with reckless driving after she drove up the street onto the sidewalk and back because she didn't want to wait for a school bus dropping off students. While it's true that waiting can make us impatient, there are also good things to do and learn in the waiting. Jesus knew this when he told his disciples, to, to not leave Jerusalem, Acts 1-4. They were waiting to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As they gathered in the upper room, likely in a state of excitement and anticipation, the disciples seemed to understand that when Jesus told them to wait, he didn't say for them to do nothing. They spent time praying and informed by Scripture. They also chose a new disciple to replace Judas when they were joined together in worship and prayer. The Holy Spirit descended upon them. The disciples hadn't simply been waiting. They'd also been preparing. As we wait on God, it doesn't mean doing nothing uh, nothing, or impatiently rushing forward. Instead, we can pray, worship, and enjoy fellowship as we anticipate what He'll do. The waiting prepares our hearts, minds, and bodies for what's to come. Yes, when God asks us to wait, we can be excited knowing that we can trust Him and the plans He has for us. And there's the question, do you find yourself in a season of waiting? How can you see this as a season of preparation instead? See, God is preparing you and I. Down here it says, um, a little prayer, God, when I'm struggling, remind me that the seasons of waiting aren't for nothing but Help to reveal your loving handiwork in my life. That's right. Now I felt like, see, the Holy Spirit wants me to read this now to you. You know, I've been writing, I told you, a lot of poetry. Um, let me see if I can find it now. Hold on. I've written, for those that know, I've written over, gosh, I don't know, over 500 poems. I just, you know, I just keep writing. <laughs> I, I don't stop. The Holy Spirit just keeps talking to me, and I just, Keep writing. Let me look and see. I've got so much going on here. I've got so much paperwork here. Let me see if I can find it. I had it. Um, I just had it. Hold on. Hold on. I got all this paperwork. Four seasons of life. That's what I called it. Let me pull it out. Oh, it dropped something. Pray for All right. Let me pull this up. One moment. Then we're going to worship this morning. We're going to just worship a few songs here. You know, I want to encourage you. You know, I know there are people that are going through stuff right now. There are Christians out there, and I want to keep you encouraged. There are those that do listen to me. I mean, we don't have a lot of people, but we do have those that listen. You know, while we're talking about it, maybe you feel led to help us. You know, we have three partners. God bless you for helping us. We appreciate you. You know who you are and there are those that have planted gifts into our ministry and we thank you. You know, I told you it doesn't take a lot of people but it does take the right people. So if you feel led to help us and you want to send a gift in the mail, you can send it to Dawn's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida, 32716 or you can give it online at www.dawnsheartfeltcorner.org. You can also send it to our email through PayPal. It will come directly to us right now at heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. I'll place all the information up there 
So um, you'll have it. We are a 501 tax deductible ministry. So you can write it off at the end of the year. So if you would like to send a larger gift and you'd like a receipt, just let us know. But I want to read you this poem, Four Seasons of Life. To everything in life, there is a reason. Life is made up of four different seasons, fall, winter, summer, and spring. Springtime is when the birds start to sing. In the fall, the leaves change. There, That is the time for you to rearrange. In the winter, life dies. You say your goodbyes. Then there is summer when everything blooms. Summer begins around the month of June. Fall and winter came. Everything remained the same. Now is the time to cheer. New beginnings are finally here. That's right. New beginnings. They're almost here, saints. Something new is about to start. Leave your past beyond. God will heal your hurting heart. Chosen, you're about to be set free. Don't hold on to those things that are damaging to you and me. Today is a new day, can't you see? You can feel it in the air. Let go of the pain inside, though it was not fair. At times, saints, you feel like you will faint. Remember, children, children, God will never leave you or forsake you in this final hour. He is right there giving you his mighty power. Just call in Christ's name. That is why our Savior came. Jesus will deliver you out of every storm you entail. Stay near to him. You will not fail. Children, you will mount up on eagle's wings and sail. Jesus understands how you feel. Trust him today. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is real. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. There's a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Verse 5, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Amen. Now, if you remember, I gave this word. I placed it up in a video, which, you know, I'm doing a lot more right now. I don't do live videos. I told you I was having problems loading up. And I, I don't feel like feel that God's having me do that. Remember, I told you it's important. I did a word. We need to study to show ourselves approved by God. So, you know, I can't do everything for you. And I'm going to get very busy later on. So you're going to have to study God's word and apply yourself, saints. You're going to have to do that because as the days go on, your brothers and sisters are not going to pat you back and say, oh, it's going to be okay. No, God wants you and I to be strong warriors for the days ahead. Because yes, Jesus is coming. No, I don't know when. Nobody knows the day or hour. Okay. So if somebody's saying, well, the, the day of Christ is this day or that day, remember, there are going to be those false prophets out there to say, oh, the Christ is over here, the Christ is over there. No, we've got to keep our focus on Jesus. The Holy Spirit will give us wisdom and discernment. If you remember, I did a word, I placed it up on 429.19. Come away, my children, and sit in my presence. It's time, saints. It's time we seek the Lord, all right? He said to me, come away, my children, and sit in my presence. Come away, my children, and sit in my presence. It is my presence. You will find fullness of joy. I will lead you, children, beside the still waters. Rest in me. Rest, I say unto you. I know many of my children are tired and worn out from all the trials that weigh them down. Do not worry. Do not fret and get upset. See, the enemy wants you and I to worry, to fret and get upset. We've got to hold our peace. I the Lord are I the Lord am in control. I see everything and I the Lord know the beginning from the end. What does Warren solve? Alright, it dissolves nothing. In fact, we're gonna read it in a minute. I've read it before, but we're gonna read it again. You must trust me, says the Lord. In this world you will have much trouble. That is why I said, Come away and sit in my presence. In my presence you will find peace, says the Lord, a peace that passes all understanding. My peace will drown out your fears of tomorrow. Take one day at a time, says the Lord, for the Lord has spoken. And I place the scriptures up there. Now, if you're not a subscriber on a YouTube page, you may want to go over there and subscribe. I don't place as much on Facebook. Um, like I used to. And in time, I, I don't know what's, who's going to run this Facebook. So I'm probably going to have new 
new websites or we're not going to have any websites I mean, because I do know we're going to have power outages. Remember what we saw in Venezuela? And I'm telling you, it's coming, Saints. Remember, with all these earthquakes and volcanoes and things happening, I, I sent letters to President Donald Trump warning what John, the scientist John O. Casey said. We could see big ones that could people could lose power and water for weeks and months at a time. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. We, we are seeing this. The media is not telling you, okay? But I'm going to tell you what's going on. You know, they want you to keep your eyes on the Russian probe and all the other things that are that are unimportant, okay? We've talked about the dead fish, the dead birds. In fact, let's go over this real quick. Now, I place up these news for you to look at. I share a lot of underground uh, world news and evangelist um, Dina Al Kamada lets me share our videos. You know, I do this so that you know what's going on. Not to cause fear or worry. I don't want you and I to get so focused on the news. But we do need to know what's going on. We need to be aware. You know, a lot of people are just going here, going there, going wherever we want. Now, I love my, my, my aunt and uncle, but they're going, my dad was telling me they're going to Greece and Italy. We've got to be careful. We've got to be careful if we're going here or there, where God sends us, okay? If, if he says us, we know that he's with us. But if we're going on our own, not knowing that God is with us, then we can walk into danger, okay? Um, a place of a video, war between the U.S. and Iran w would have apocalyptic consequences. Now, I believe we're getting ready to go to war, all right? You can look at that video by Dina Alcometa on our YouTube. Iran likely to move ballistic missiles through the Persian Gulf. Uh, I'm not going to read all these headings, but you need to go look at that. And what about the U.S. and North Korea launch missiles at the same time? Now we got the North Korea, that Kim Jong-un, here it goes again, sending those missiles. I don't trust them. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't trust any of them. We cannot trust our enemies. We cannot trust Russia. We can't trust China. What about the tariffs now? We, we just raised tariffs on 30, $352 billion. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Oh, so we got this um, North Korean, he's sending out these drills, these missiles again. Um, so we got to pray, say, this is serious. The United States cuts power in Venezuela embassy, they're saying. All right. That video is up on YouTube. U.S. missile defense systems to Japan is a threat to Russia. The United States continuous military buildup in Japan, namely deployment of missile defense system, is a direct threat to Russia. They're saying, all right? You go look at that video. What about this? The de deadly flooding. We, know, we don't talk about all the flooding that we're seeing, all right? That's why I love what Underground World News. He gives us the news, and he's telling us what is going on. There's flooding in Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma. What about Michigan? Okay, water levels on the Great Lakes are running high. Flooding in New York, Ohio, and Michigan. This is serious, Aids. It's going to ruin our crop. And we're not talking about any of this. Recent rainfall has already high water levels surging in the Great Lakes, contributing to flooding along the lake shores in parts of Ohio and Michigan. And New York is expected to follow suit in the days ahead. Okay, this is what we're seeing, okay? Water of Kent beaches are orange, sparkling fierce. Water is toxic. Dead fish up to two feet are washing up on Kent Beaches after the sea turned orange or saying. And we've seen that. Love bug. Oh my gosh, I gotta tell you about the love bug apocalypse here in Florida, which is true. You know, my girlfriend and I, we live right here in Florida. We were at the beach this past week and she had love bugs. I'm not kidding, all over her um, windshield and on the front of her van. She had to wash them out because you know, um, once they get on there, they're really hard to get off. All right. And then Daniel was riding his bicycle and he was telling me that love bugs were flying at him. He can't even ride his bicycle. I mean, this is getting serious. What about the millions of locusts darkened the sky over Saudi Arabia? Remember, I gave that video. All right. It reminds me of something out of the Bible. All right. A U.S. drinking water crisis that's going on right now. As many as 19 million people in 43 states may be exposed to harmful contaminants in their drinking water. All right? What about the 12 million pounds of frozen chicken? 
recalled over metal pieces. Now, I don't eat this Tyson food chicken. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I don't eat a lot of the food because the preservatives and all the stuff that they're putting in these foods, all right? We've got to watch what we're eating, all right? Even the fresh foods, you know, it's got pesticides, the fresh vegetables. I, I eat mostly vegetables. That's mainly my diet, you know, I, but I do have hummus. I love hummus, uh, chickpeas. Um, I love salsa, tortilla chips, uh, you know, but I eat like once a day, sometimes twice if I'm hungry. You know, sometimes I, I don't even have time to eat. I'm telling you, I eat nuts. I eat whatever, whenever. You know, we in America, we eat too much food. That's one thing I believe God's going to have me talking about. I've got a book that's going to come out about that. And it's a way of life that God wants us to eat. The disciples did not eat all the time. I believe we eat way too much. Because if you remember, when the disciples, they were falling asleep right after the supper. You know, so we've got to stay aware, saints. I believe we're going to be up, and I don't know about you, but I'm not sleeping. I'm up every few hours, all right? I wake up uh, every two hours here and there, like four times a night, all right? I believe God wants us up praying and seeking the Lord, saints, because of what is getting ready to take place, all right? We saw, I told you, China, the rose on Friday, this just past Friday, another 325 Billion in China goods are already now. That Chinadale, they were meeting and talking about this. I heard here. I, I've got a video. I, I don't. I think I stuck it up. Readers have been paying close attention to every link related to the ongoing U.S.-China trade talks. Might remember uh, this story six weeks ago about Beijing's pension for returning trade jail draft proposals to Washington riddled with red line strikeouts. Okay, and then Reuters is reporting this. It appears President Trump finally lost his patience with Beijing when they returned a draft trade deal with strikeouts eliminating virtually all of the major concessions made during the past weeks. And we're going to talk about that because God did speak to me. And I've said this before. I'm telling you, layoffs are coming, saints. God told me that. I heard it. I'm going to share that with you in a minute. Let's read this scripture and then let's worship a few songs. Do not worry. We've talked about this before. If you want to read it with me, you can. Matthew 6, starting verse 25. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of there. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry, verse 28, about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all this splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. So do not worse or saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For, these, for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. See, God knows. He knows what you and I need before we even ask him. So we have to trust him, saints. First or is true. But seek first his kingdom. See, we've got to be seeking the Lord. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And I'm here to tell you that I've never known God not to take care of Daniel. I'm going to tell you right now. I've always placed God first in my life. He's my everything. I'm going to tell you right now. He is our everything. Without him, saints, we are in trouble. America is in trouble. We have got to get back to God. We've got to get back to seeking God. We cannot seek these other gods. I'm going to tell you right now, we are worshiping other gods, idol worship in this nation, setting up temples. All right? We need to pray for President Donald Trump. Let's stop right now. We need to pray for President Donald Trump. We need to pray that he makes the right decisions for America, okay? This is serious. If you're listening to me, President Donald Trump, we're praying for you. I want you to know we the Christians love you. We're praying that you will make the right decisions for the nation of America because America is in trouble. We are about to go through hard days. Yes, layoffs are coming. 
All right. Yeah, I know we say we want to make America great again, but I'm going to tell you right now, America's not going to be made great again. We cannot be living in willful sin, and that's what's happening in America. We've turned away from God, all right? We've turned away from God and what God's Word says, and we're doing what we want to do. We're trying to please the people. Well, it's time we, we do what is right because God is going to judge America. He's not going to just judge America. He's judging all these nations. You know, it's not climate change. We've talked about that before. It's God's judgment. What you are witnessing and seeing right now in our world is God's judgment. And it's going to get worse, okay? It's not going to get any better, okay? And God said, remember he said, sudden destruction, boom, it's going to happen. And when you least expect it. So we've got to get our focus on the Lord, all right? Let me finish reading this. I was reading this scripture. We're going to pray for President Trump in a minute. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So God does not want us to worry. Okay, let me tell you something. If we put God first in this nation, in America, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, there are people that are not going to circle. The, the wheat and tares are going to grow together. There's always going to be those until Jesus comes back that are not going to like us. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to be persecuted. Yes, we're going to be persecuted. We need to pray that while President Donald Trump is in office, because I believe the Holy Spirit put him in office for such a time as this, so that you and I could share the gospel with those that need to hear. Because yes, Jesus is coming back. He's not going to leave you and I here to suffer, okay? If you remember, he came back. Remember, we're in a modern day, so I sound more, I'm going to tell you right now. People don't want to hear truth. They want to do what they want to do, all right? So they're not going to listen to you, and they're not going to listen to me. They're going to attack us. We're going to be persecuted. So we've got to, I'm going to tell you right now, we've got to hold our shoulders back, keep our eyes on Jesus, and have some backbone. Be strong in the Lord. My dad always says, be, have like a duck's back. Let it wash right off of You know, people persecute me on on YouTube, hey, I may not look or act or dress the way you think I should. I may do things in the future. I don't know what's going to, you know, when people all time, I say, hey, I got a brain injury. If you want to give me a hard time, take it up with my God. At least I'm serving God. What are you doing with your life? And it's time, Christians, we stop judging one another. It's time we embrace one another. It's time we pray for one another. It's time we love one another. God is love. How is the world going to know we are Christians? If we're fighting and arguing on YouTube, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm seeing. We got Christians backbiting, fighting, sit, trying to prove who's right, who the Antichrist is, when Jesus is coming. Who cares? Let's do what God is asking us to do right now. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He wants to get you and I ready, okay? He's going to judge us for discipline us, and then the world. So we need to focus on ourselves. Quit trying to pull the, what, the plank of our brother's eye. Let's look at what it said. Take the speck out of your own eye. Then you'll, then you'll see the, instead of, well, I don't know how that scripture goes. Well, take the, God talks about it. Take the speck out of your own, the own eye before you try to take the plank out of your brother's eye. You know, we're, we sit around and we judge one another. And we, 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 we don't see ourselves, okay? We're too busy. I should read you that scripture. Let me see if I can find it. I don't know where everything's at. The Holy Spirit helps me. Let me see if I... Oh, uh, well, this one talks about love your enemies. We need to love those, our enemies, because they're going to be people that are going to not like you and I, all right? So we have to bless them. Here, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. See, God doesn't know your heart. I mean, God knows your heart. Man doesn't know your heart. They may judge you and they see the outward appearance and they say all things. You just need to ignore them. And that goes for me. Oh, wow. You don't like me? You don't like the way I dress? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. You know, I've got fed a lot of people. Okay. I don't care if whether you like me or not. I only answer to God. All right. And that goes for you. Don't worry what people are saying about you. Rejoice and be glad because grace is your Lord in heaven. 
For in the same way that persecuted the prophets, they were be the prophets who were before you. Okay, so I'm not going to read all of this, but um, I'm trying to find that scripture. Let me see if I can find it. Love your enemies. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. So we've got to love them and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. Verse 46, this is Matthew 6. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? You know, we're trying to fit in the world. Why are we trying to fit in the world? We're different. That's why a lot of people don't like me. Oh, well, you don't like me. I'm not here to impress you. And when I get ready to speak, don't bring your cameras because I don't want you coming there trying to scope it out and take pictures. I'm not there for you, okay? I'm there doing God's will. It's all about Christ. It's not about me, all right? Are you not even... Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet on your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. No, we're not perfect, but we're to strive for perfection. We're to strive to be like Jesus. Here we go, judging others. Matthew 7, here we go, saints. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Hey, Jesus said this. I didn't say this. Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Do not judge or you too will be judged. From the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Verse 3, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plague in your own eye? See, God's saying this. Why are you so worried about somebody else? Worry about yourself. My dad always tells me that. Worry about yourself. Don't worry about yourself. Daniel, worry about yourself. Same with you. Husband, wife, worry about yourself. You do what's right. Leave them in God's hands. God knows what's going on. All right. Verse 4. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck, the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. Verse 5. First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. All right. See, so it's right there. God's telling us to worry about ourselves, and we need to stop worrying about other people. Let's pray for President Donald Trump, because said we're going to pray for him. So, Father, we come together as a body of believers. We lift up President Donald Trump. President Donald Trump, we love you. We love you, and we appreciate that God has placed you in office for such a time as this, and we're praying for you. We're praying for you, President Donald Trump. We're praying that you would make the right decisions for our nation. Because our nation is in trouble, President Donald Trump. We're praying for you. We pray, oh God, that he and the, and the Trump administration would do what's right, Lord. That we would turn back to you, oh God. And that you would protect America. Protect our economy. Protect us from wars and rumors of war. Protect us from our enemies, Lord. We cannot trust no one. We have to be wise like a sermon, innocent as a dove, Lord. We pray for President Donald Trump. We pray for our administration, Lord. We pray, Father, for our enemies in this nation, oh God, that you protect us and keep us safe, Lord, in the hour that is upon us, Lord. Trouble is coming our way, Lord. I know and others know that trouble is headed our way. But, Father, we're not focused on that. Our focus is upon you. We don't worship our president. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We don't worship a man. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to have your way in America. You have given us a commandment, Lord. We're to pray for those over us, not to judge them, not to, we're to lift them up. We're supposed to pray for those that are our mayors, our senators, our president, those that are over us, Lord, our governors, Lord, we just lift them up right now. In Jesus' name, we ask you to have your way in America. We pray for Israel, Lord God. We pray for Israel, Lord. I, I, they're going to go to war soon, Lord. We ask for your protection upon your people, your chosen people, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep your people over there that live in Israel safe in Jesus' name. We pray for the Jewish people to give their hearts and lives to you, Lord Jesus. 
This is the time, Lord. Revival, Lord. We pray for a mighty revival that's getting ready to take place, Lord, in America. Jesus moving. We're believing for that, Lord. We're believing miracles beyond miracles. You said we shall do greater miracles if we believe. So, Lord, we believe. Now is the time. We ask, Father, that your presence would go forth, your power, your anointing in Jesus' my name. Amen, amen. All right, let's worship a few songs. All right. Because he lives. It's all because of Jesus. God's Jesus. They call you Jesus. Worship him, saints. To buy my pardon and empty graves there to prove my Savior lives. Pray some saints. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. That's right, you and I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's gone. Take our fears away, Lord. I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. Sweet to hold a newborn baby. Feel the pride and joy he brings. Greater still, the calm assurance this child can be a certain because he lives. Amen. Sing it. Because he lives. Yes, it's because you live, Lord. We can face tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Because he lives. There is God. Because I know. He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. I'll cross the river. I'll find life's fire. The war with me. Gives way to me. I'll see the lights of Amen. Yes. Because he lives. Tell him. I can face tomorrow. We can face tomorrow, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's all because of you, Lord. It's gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. All right, trust and obey. We're going to trust you, Jesus. We're going to trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Why 
shall we do his good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, oh, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile with me drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear, can I buy my way to send away. That's right, trust some saints. Trust and obey, for oh, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father. We need your help to trust you and obey you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey, oh trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest on his promise, just to know the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I greet Him, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust and all oh, grace to trust you we need your grace to trust you more love that all right one more his eyes on the sparrow praise him saints He's watching over us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm
share a few messages with you. I'm going to share this one first. Um, you know, I did, I have a, a few I'm going to be putting up prepare for increase. And we're not talking about financial increase. I'm talking about spiritual. I'm going to read that in a little bit because he gave me another word. God is preparing you children. Okay. See, he's, that's what he's doing right now. He's preparing you and I for what's ahead. All right. But I'm going to share this with you. You know, on 5-9, you know, we did see the market drop a little bit right after those tariffs um, that China, what we placed on China's goods. Um, on 5-9-19, at 11-20 a.m., I heard the Holy Spirit speak to my spirit, layoffs are coming, get ready. I feel the Holy Spirit is saying to me to tell you to figure out how you're spending your money and save what you can. Now, we're going to go over some things that I've in a minute here. Um, he said to me, you will need it in the coming days. Hard days are coming very soon, and those days are almost here. Layoffs are coming, I say to you. This is a warning. Prepare now for hard days, for the Lord has spoken. Now, if you remember, I shared a word back in October 1915. Layoffs are coming. I woke up around 3.30 a.m. and I heard God saying to my spirit, layoffs are coming. Do not fear or panic. Now, I told you before, prophetic servants can tell. They have an unction. They feel it is coming. It may not be today. Remember, I told you one day to the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day to the Lord. So we haven't even had one day to the Lord. Okay? So when he gave me this word back in 2015, he was telling me this to warn you of what's coming, okay? Now, it may not happen right that day, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And people are always saying, oh, you're false. You don't know nothing. Well, that's not true because I told you one day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years are like one day, so we haven't had one day. 
And he said this to me, God wants you to be aware of what's coming so that you do not get frightened. I told you earlier, hard days are coming. Many do not want to listen to the truth of what God is saying to his chosen prophet. And see, we're seeing it now. All right, we're seeing what's going on with our world, with all these earthquakes, volcanoes, the flooding, the food. I mean, these near-earth objects, meteorites, asteroids, we're, we're going to have an impact with the asteroid. You know, that's in the Bible. It's going to happen, saints. All right. Many do not want to listen to the truth of what God is saying to his chosen prophets. They would, would rather ignore it and pretend it's going away. It is going nowhere, says the Lord. God is about to humble our nation and the world. Give your heart and life to Jesus now, says the Lord. All right. And then on 1519, now he told me in best, the markets are going to fall on Monday. Now, I don't know what Monday. That's what he was saying to me. I heard the Holy Spirit say to me that on 1519. You will see the stock market drastic falling in numbers. This is just the beginning of what I, the Lord, am about to do. Get ready. Nobody is listening or paying attention. Their attention is on matters that are not important, says the Lord. Everyone is concerned about tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come for you, says the Lord. Stop planning your own life, I hear the Lord say. We're all here one minute and gone the next. You know, everybody's worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, in James 4, 13, 15, it says, do not boast about tomorrow. You can read that. Then if you remember, on November 15th of last year, at 9.08 a.m., I heard the economy is going to go haywire. Remember? You can go on our YouTube and listen to that. What does the word haywire mean? It means erratic, out of control, chaotic. Are you ready for what God is about to do? The shaking is almost here. Your finances are about to shake. Let me tell you something. They control the market. All right. There are people behind closed doors that you and I don't know anything about. They're doing things, fix things. They're running this stage, okay? This is all planned. They know. There are people that know what's going on. That's why I said we keep President Donald Trump in prayer, protect him from the new world order. I'm going to tell you right now, the money system is going to change. We've talked about that. In the last days, you're going to have to get a mark in your right hand or forehead. The mark of the beast, 666, so you won't be able to buy yourself. Money is going to be worth nothing, okay? We're already seeing that. They're, they're having people chipped on their jobs. They want people accustomed to this. And we're, I told you, people are getting these tattoos. So they will accept this mark with no problem, okay? So we're moving towards that. It's not here yet, but we are moving towards that thing. Now, um... These are words that I've spoken earlier. I'm not going to read all of them. The, the economy will not affect you. I said that November 12th. Okay. I got this at 704. There are those that are walking with God and know what's coming. Okay. And you've been preparing and getting ready for what's coming. Okay. God has been preparing you for such a time as this. The economy and what's getting ready to happen is not going to affect you. He said, you, my sons and daughters, have been trained in the spirit for this time period that is ahead of you. Do not fear or be afraid. The economy will display great decline. Others will be afraid, but not you, says the Lord. I, Lord, told you this was coming. I said this on November 12, 2018. Others will be afraid, but not you, says the Lord. I, the Lord, told you this was coming. They do not believe me or listen to my true prophetic servants who tried to warn them and the great that the great fall was coming. How foolish of you not to listen. Shaking their heads, saying, this will never happen. You fool, says the Lord. Many of you will die this very hour. Who then is a fool for not believing my words? Repent this day from your sinfulness that I may save you from destruction. A time is coming when you will say to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, that says in Revelation 6, 12 through 17, the cosmic disturbances. Now, I don't know. Is this something to do with, remember, I told you, I showed you that picture. Let me see if I have. With President Donald Trump, remember, with the floodwaters coming in. Um, you sit in one area where the desk was, and then the next scene that was taken away. Then God gave me the interpretation of that dream, if you remember. In the fallen part of the dream, we're leaving the field of grabbing parts, and heard and felt the ground shake. And then Donald Trump was wearing one of his Make America Great Again shirts. He was walking alone. Remember I told you, there's going to be people that are going to... Um, forsake the president, okay? We need to pray for him, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, we can't trust everyone. President Donald Trump, you're listening. There are people...
that you have in an office. You cannot trust them. They, we need to get them out of there. I'm going to tell you right now. Because the enemy comes in disguise. We've got to be careful. Uh, it's hard to know what's of God and what's not. Because the enemy is roaming around seeking who he can devour in these last days. So we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. He will give us wisdom and discernment. Okay, Trump came over, nodded smart, and said very simply, you got to keep praying for me. So we've got to keep praying for our president. It's so important. Remember, I told you that the White House, I believe, in time, is going to be a house of prayer. I saw rooms set aside for prayer. I mean, they're going to be looking to find answers. I'm going to tell you right now, those people in politics don't have the answers. All right. Remember, like in Joseph's day, they came to all those kings looking for our answers. They couldn't give them answers. The only one that had the answers were Joseph, all right? So we need to get back to God, all right? We need to get back to God and what he's doing in his last days. Okay, so people are saying, oh, this is not going to happen. Revelation 6, 12, 17, six seal cosmic disturbances. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black, sackcloth of hair, and as the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell on the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll, and when it rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the, fa the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Well, I've told you before now, okay, let me go see these videos um, I have. If you remember now, um, what what's going on, all right? Um, I t let me look back here. Let me find it. Um, we're seeing strong flares. Things are happening in the sun and that are affecting the way the planets are lining up. And if you remember... NASA Mystery warns we need to prepare, prepare now, they're saying, for an astronaut impact. Do they know something that they're, they're keeping from us? And remember, I told you that FEMA was preparing for asteroids. There was a near-Earth impact event scenario that they, they did on April 29th through May 3rd, all right? And if you remember that they've been doing exercises, preparing for... A, uh, an event, if we were to have an event, which now we're, we are going to have an event, okay? And I believe they know something is coming. Remember all those caskets they bought? What is that about? Remember I said um, in 2007, move away from the West Coast. The Holy Spirit woke me up at 3 a.m. Same day John L. Casey spoke to the press and warned, warned Rick Perry, Secretary Rick Perry, I sent a letter to President Donald Trump. I've been sending letters. I've spoken to the scientists. He said, well, maybe somebody will, I said, well, maybe somebody will listen. He said, yours is religious. Mine is scientific. So I have spoken to a scientist. He lives right here in the state of Florida. Tell me that is not strange. And not that, but our president is from the state of Florida. God knows exactly what he's doing. I'm telling you right now, God has got something that is coming. And we've got to get our eyes on the Lord. Remember I told you that um, that they're trying to shoot down these asteroids. And they say, well, we need a comprehensive plan so we can hide. Where, where are we going to hide? If one gets, there's nowhere you and I can hide. I, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to hit us and we're going to die. But we can have one that hit the ocean. We can have one that, that people are going to die. All right. We've... God is in control. Remember all those videos I did about God was showing me we have to have something covering our head. We're going to have to be in an enclosed area. I mean, I never had God actually give me directions and what we need to do. We don't need to panic or be fearful. We just need to get ready. It's coming. I don't know when. God will show us. He'll tell us what we need to do. But we've got to get back to seeking the Lord and preparing for hard days. We in this nation need to get back to God. I'm telling you right now. All right? It's very serious because something can happen when you least expect it. Boom! You know, just because California has not had an earthquake, they're going to have one. I'm going to tell you right now. They've been having these small swarms. Oregon is, uh, what about uh, Yellowstone, Washington? We're seeing them. Yellowstone, Nevada, Utah. We're now we're seeing up in New York. We're seeing them. 
uh, Tennessee. We're seeing, we've seen them over even in Illinois. Remember those five fault lines I've talked about, those dangerous fault lines. I'm not going to talk about that right now. You need to go on our website and you can listen to all that. Okay, so the pains of world is feeling, I said, it's like a woman in childbirth. They shall not subside, I said. They shall increase up until the return of the Lord. You can read it, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11, the day of the Lord. And see, it says in verse 2, For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Okay, but we, we don't live in darkness. We're, we're children of the day, all right? We're not to be like those that are living in darkness. Whether it says, therefore, let sleep. As it says, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. See, we've got to be watching and praying for those who sleep. Sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet of hope and salvation. For God did not point us to breath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. Now it's time to seek the Lord. Soon I will take my children out of here. The rest of the world will be left here to suffer and die. You will either believe the truth or take the mark of the beast, which is the Antichrist. We just talked about that. Believe a lie for a day's wages. You will not be able to buy, eat, or sell without the mark of the beast. If you are left behind, do not take the mark. You will die for all eternity, never to live with me in heaven. Suffer and die for me, and you shall live with me. In eternal heaven. Now, Revelation, I'm going to read you 13, 11, 13. If you're listening to me and you're about to turn the station off, don't turn it off. God's talking to you. There are those still that have not given their hearts and lives to God. I want you to know God loves you. All right? Maybe you're an atheist. Maybe you don't believe that there is a God. Yes, there is a God. And there is a God that's real. For those that don't know, in 2000, I was in a very dangerous car accident. I had brain surgery on the right side of my brain. I should have been dead. They shaved the whole right side of my brain. I'm a walking miracle. So when people say, oh, you're drunk because you're slurring your speech. No, I was in a car accident. I should have been dead. I am a walking miracle. I'm here for a reason. To testify about the Lord Jesus Christ, you're here for us. We are all here for a reason, all right? When it's time for us to go, we'll go, okay? It's it's not over, okay? You may think, well, my my life, I haven't followed God. My life is over. I'm going to die. No, it's not over. Remember those ones, those, um, that, those criminals that stood with Jesus on the cross? He said, today you'll be with me. The one said, remember me, Lord? And he said, Today you'll be in the paradise. You can be with God. It doesn't matter where you live. Disasters and things are going to happen all over. Okay? But we need to make sure we're right with God right here and right now. Maybe I'm talking to you. Let's just pray right now. Maybe I'm talking to you and you don't know Christ. You've never given him your heart. And life. Today is your day. I want you to know God loves you. It doesn't matter what sin you've committed. We've all done things. I've done things. Uh, you know, hey, I sin every single day of my life. God is a merciful, loving God. He loves you and I. We're not saved by brown points, what we do right. We're saved by grace, God's grace. He knew what you and I were going to do before we ever did it. He knows. He knows everything. He knows every hair on your head. God is amazing. God knows everything and loves us still. And I'm still learning about God's love. You know, because when I was a child, I thought he was rough. He's going to beat me over the head because my, my father's like that, okay? My father's Italian and he's rough. No, I'm still learning God's love. God is very merciful. He's loving, okay? Maybe you didn't have a loving father. Maybe your parents were strict, okay? And it's hard for you to accept that God loves you. I want you to know he loves you. He cares about you. He cares about everything that's going on in your life. And if you don't know Christ, today, I want to pray with you. Just repeat this prayer with me, but mean it in your heart. If you mean business, God means business. God will be there to help you. He will give you grace. He'll give you strength. He'll lead you and guide you. Pray with me today. Bow your head and just repeat this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me in your blood. Come into my heart 
and save me. I believe you died for me, Jesus, to give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Go and share the good news. Go and tell somebody. Maybe you're the first one to come to Christ. Maybe you're going to be the one for your family. Pray for your family members that they will give their hearts and lives to Christ. You do what's right, and they'll come and they'll follow. Get yourself in a Bible-believing church. I know there, there are some out there, all right? They're hard to find, but there are some out there. You know, go ahead and subscribe to our website. Let us help mentor you. Let us help train you to be all that Christ wants you to be so that you can be strong and that you can help others and lead them to the Lord. All right. Praise God. I'm going to read you this scripture for those that are listening to me and they're refusing to accept Christ. Okay. You're saying, oh, no, that's not for me. Oh, yes, it is. Maybe you're going to accept Christ later. Maybe I'm just here to plant the seed and somebody else is going to water it. Or maybe you're going to be left here and you're going to remember something I've said to you. I want to read you the scripture. Revelation 13, 11 through 18. This is the beast from the earth. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he talked like a dragon. Verse 12. This beast stood before the first beast and used the same power the first beast had. He used this power to make everyone living on the earth worship the first beast. The first beast was the one who had the death wound that was healed. The second beast did great miracles. He even made fire come down from heaven to earth while people were watching. Verse 14, this second beast fooled the people living on earth by using the miracles that he had been given the power to do for the first beast. He ordered people to make an idol to, to honor the first beast. All right, that's the false prophet and the antichrist. The one that was wounded by the sword but did not die. The second beast, verse 15, was given power to give life to the idol of the first beast. Then the idol could speak and order all those who did not worship to be killed. So you're going to have to die for the Lord. All right, verse 16. The second beast all horse, all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave down mark, put on their right hand or in their forehead. 17, no one could buy or sell without the mark. So you're going to have to have this mark. Food, well, um, I mean, money is not going to be worth nothing. All right, they're already checking on you with the TVs, and they're, they're, they're going to monitor you and I. They're going to know everything about us. Verse 18, anyone who has understanding can find the meaning of the beast number. This requires wisdom. The number is the number of a man. It's 666. All right. Now, I don't know everything about prophecy, but, you know, I do know what, what I need to know, and that's all. You know, God didn't tell me I had to know everything. All right. None of us do. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of people that don't know. Right, but we've got to keep our focus on Jesus. He'll give us wisdom and direction. If you remember our 1228, I spoke a word, a recession is coming. I, that's right, it's coming now. Um, I looked up the word recession, it means a general slowdown in economic activity. Recessions generally occur when there is a windspread drop in spending and adverse demand shock. This may be triggered by various events such as a financial crisis. External trade shock and adverse supply shock are the bursting of an economic bubble. And that, he was telling me, be aware, it's going to happen suddenly. All right? Everything in your life is going to change in a moment. So I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to happen. Boom, like that. He keeps telling me it's going to happen suddenly. All right? God's prophetic servants have been warning about an economic crisis. No one wants to believe it's going to happen. The Christians are putting their trust in a man, President Donald Trump. Man cannot save America. I'm here to tell you again. I'm not worshiping President Donald Trump. Man cannot save America. The only one that can save America is the Lord. We must pray for President Donald Trump that he will make the right decision as the President of the United States. His decisions will affect all of us. Okay? Artem said this, even the wealthy and famous, we need to pray for him. Don't gossip and join those that are that will turn even more against him in the coming day. There are those gossiping, not on YouTube. They say, oh, I just want to share. No, you wanted to gossip. We need to pray for President Donald Trump. You know, who's to say he don't say everything right? Do you? I'm going to tell you, I don't. <laughs> I'm very bold. I speak whatever. All right. And part of it may be my brain injury. Oh, but oh, well. Oh, well. Pray for me. Don't gossip about me. 
First Timothy 2, 1 Timothy 2.1.3 says, pray for all men. See, it's in the Bible. I didn't say this. Don't get mad at me. It says, pray for all men. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of things to make for all men. Men. For kings and all are in authority. See, President Donald Trump's in authority. He's the chief commander, the president of the United States. Why aren't you praying for him? Why are you praying? Say, oh, he's going to have a, he's going to get shot in the back. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're not even going to go there. That upsets me, all right? That doesn't mean for you to get up there and start talking about if 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 God shows you that, that means get in your prayer class, get on your knees and pray. You think it's not going to affect you? You think you're going to fly on out of here? Who said that? God didn't say we're going home yet. So where are you getting that from? I'm going to tell you right now, we need to pray for President Donald Trump. Because if something happens to him, we're in trouble, saints. I'm going to tell you right now. God placed him in his office for such a time as this. So we Christians can preach the true gospel. We have our freedom. Do you want your freedoms taken away? That's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you right now. So for those Christians that want to gossip and they want to start their own, own um, protesting, I'm going to tell you right now. We need to pray for President Donald. We need to be unified. The church needs to come together in Christ, and we need to pray. We don't need to be like the Democrats or Republicans. They're, I mean, they're coming against President Donald Trump. Why are we acting like the world? Okay? I'm not saying President Donald Trump makes the every decision right, but pray for him, saints. Pray. We prayed for President Obama, didn't we? We prayed for President Obama. And it doesn't matter the color of our skin. What matters is our heart. God is looking at our heart. So it says, we're to pray for all those in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. See how it says? We're to lead a quiet and peaceful life. It doesn't say we're to protest. It doesn't say we're to get on our YouTube. We're to gossip and share with everyone doesn't say that just like we do in our churches gossiping about our brothers and sisters it said lead peaceable quiet lives that's what God's telling all of us to do mind your own business and that goes for me God quit worrying about other people what they're doing I told you one time I'm going to go Charlotte I'll never forget that one time this person was worshiping the real anointed and he had an earring in his ear and I said God why has he got this earring and God said the same things you do the thing you the same reason why you do the things you do see we're, we're too busy worrying about somebody else judging them I, I've learned a lot quit judging others judge myself I got enough of my own to answer for I'm gonna tell you right now I got enough and I don't know what's gonna happen in the future I'm going through things where I don't understand I'm like God what are you doing what are you doing, Lord? All right? No one's perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So quit judging. All right? I'm just going to say that. I'm going to keep saying it. All right? So we talked about this. President Trump may not always make the right decision. He's human just like you and me. God calls us to pray for all men, especially for those who are in authority. President Donald Trump is in authority. He, your president, respect him. He needs your prayers more than ever. It's a very difficult task running our nation. Do you think you could do a better job? Ask yourself that. If you were in charge running this nation, do you think you could do a better job? Then stop gossiping and start in riots, fights. I heard the Lord say this. Some of you are backbiting. Do you think that pleases the Lord? God wants you and me to lead a quiet life. And I said, what that means is you and I need to pray quietly to ourselves. Do not join the crowd, the liberals, all those that hate Christians, and our values. Okay? They don't, they don't care about you and they don't care about me. We're just hurting ourselves. That's what God was showing me. You're making the Christians look bad. Be a peacemaker, I heard him say. Offer a peace to your brothers and sisters, even your enemies that hate you. You will make peace with your enemies. They will in turn like you for no reason. That's right. It says that in the Bible. God will touch their hearts. You just love them and pray for them. All right. Remember we talked about this? You know, I keep giving you words, things that I've spoken. You can go on a YouTube. You can subscribe and listen to these messages. Do not squander your wealth. That's at 10.05 on one That's what I heard God say. Do not squander your wealth. 
Meaning of the word squander, it means waste. And I just talked about that. Remember, I told you, laughs are coming. And he said to me, get ready. I felt the Holy Spirit saying to me, tell you to figure out how you're spending your money and you need to save it. Don't squander your wealth, your money. Don't waste it. Reckless in a foolish manner. Misuse, spend recklessly, throw away, spend like water. And that goes for all of us, including myself. We need to watch how we're spending our money. You will need that money, he said to me. Layoffs are coming. I said that in January. Layoffs are coming. Big layoffs. Large corporations. Those that work at a factory. Warehouse and assembly line. You will need that money to pay your rent. Water bill. Electricity. Medical bills. Financial obligations. Student loans. Car payments. Taxes on your home. He said to me, some of you will have your cars repossessed. You will not be able to pay the monthly payment you owe on it. You will need to pay for food, rent, and other expenses. You will have to walk, take the bus, or ride a bicycle. Difficult days are ahead for the American people. Dark days that we've never witnessed here in the United States, like the Great Depression. I'm telling you, saints, it's coming. Get yourself out of debt. I've said that many of times. To get yourself out of other debt, out of debt, and so have other prophetic servants have said that this is not a joke. This is a reality. You will witness this with your very own eyes. Stop listening to those wolves in sheep clothing that are calling themselves pastors, teachers, and prophets, and they're telling you, um, um, what they call themselves. What, what is it? Life coach. The only coach you and I need is the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you right now. The Holy Spirit will teach us. What's of him, what's not. So we don't need no life coach. I mean, they're on there trying to make money. And they got classes for this, classes for that. They're trying to steal from you and pocket it, okay? They're lying to you, not preaching the true word of God. They are taking all your hard-earned money and spending it foolishly. That's what I'm telling you right now. That's what we're seeing. How about those that are speaking the true words of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's time for you, my sons and daughters, to get out now. A great big falling away is coming to the body of Christ. Now, we've talked about this, the great apostasy. Remember, I know people say, oh, Jesus is coming right now. No, it's not going to happen yet. We're getting closer, but it's not going to happen yet. You know, every time I think, well, God's going to do something, he makes me wait even longer. There's a reason, saints. There's a reason he's got you and I waiting. All right, the church is not ready to go home. I'm going to tell you right now. God's got to get you and I right, right with him before he comes back. There are things going on in the church that we're not talking about. All right, he wants to get the church ready. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4 says, The great apostate. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together by Jan, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word, or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Now, we've seen some falling away. There's going to be more. I'm going to tell you right now. It all says, and the man of sin is revealed. So I guess we're going to see the, the son of perdition, it says. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. To me, it sounds like we're going to be here, saints. I'm not saying we're going to. I believe this is my own opinion, okay? You have your opinion. I have my opinion. I don't believe in a pre-rapture. I believe, and I don't believe in the rapture. I believe we're going to see Jesus coming in the clouds. He's going to get us out of it. I believe we're going to be in the middle. Remember I said, watch and pray that you're worthy to escape. I don't believe we're going to be left here. Because if you remember, um, Abraham got out of Sodom and Gomorrah. So I believe God will take you and I out of here before it gets really bad. He said, watch and pray that you're worthy to escape. So I believe it's somewhere in the middle. That is my opinion. All right. All right, let me see if there's anything else I want to talk to you about here. Okay, so you need to go. All right, this was on 12-13. Your assets are going to freeze. At 3.30 a.m., I woke and while lying in bed, I asked, Lord, when are we getting out of this apartment? I said that all the time, Lord. God never tells me when he just gives me another word about what he's getting ready to do. Precept around precept. I heard the Holy Spirit say this to my spirit. Your assets are going to freeze. I don't even know what that word means in the financial world. So I had to look it up on the internet. To, asset means 
An asset is a resource with economic value that an individual, corporation, or country owns or controls with the expectation that it will provide a future benefit. Asset then is that is owned and cannot be sold or used in any way due to a debt that needs to be paid. See, we owe debt. I'm gonna tell you right now. I think we China owns some of our debt. It's gonna China even said that they're gonna come back at us because we're putting the um the the we put the um the that trade war, we put more taxes on, so they said they were kind of come at us. So I don't know what's getting ready to happen. Only like, God knows. The asset remains frozen until such debts have been paid or been satisfied by some other means. Owner of assets most often notified by writing that their asset is frozen. Your assets are going to freeze. Take your money out of the stock market. That was what God was showing me. You're about to lose all your money. You have invested in stocks and bonds. Okay, I get, um, I heard him say, I just gave a prophetic word and told you a recession is coming. Then I tell you it will happen suddenly. You can go listen to all this, okay? It's on our YouTube. Okay, I'm not here to draw fear. I'm, I'm here to tell you what's coming, saints. And that you need to get right with the Lord. You need to um, get out of debt. I mean, if you're, and you need to save your money and not spend it foolishly. All right. Layoffs are coming. Saints, I'm going to keep saying it. Layoffs are coming. And those that don't know Christ, layoffs are coming. All right. Give your heart and life to the Lord. Stop putting it off. All right. Well, I'm just going to briefly talk about this. You know, I'm putting up a word on 5-4. Prepare for increase. I'm not talking about financial increase. I'm talking about spiritual increase. Your faith, he was showing me, will increase. Many of my children do not believe the scriptures. They have read them over and over, but still doubt my promises. I made long ago. These promises are about to come into reality. I'm not a God that lies. If I spoke it, I will do it. All my promises are yea and amen. Believe my spoken words and stop doubting, says the Lord. Now is the time to test my words, I hear the Lord say. Watch and see what our Lord will do, for the Lord has spoken. Now I've listed all the scriptures on here for you to read. Okay, so God's going to allow something. He already said greater miracles you will do. So we've got to believe, saints. We've got to have faith. If God did it back then, he's going to do it in our time period. All right? We've got to quit worrying. And we see we're so used to going to the store and getting whatever we need. But I'm telling you, a time is coming. We're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to pray and believe that God will provide for our needs. All right. Um, and then on 510, he said, God is preparing you, children. Artem say this at 3.07 p.m. My children, I'm preparing you in the secret place. And I looked up, you know what the secret place is? The secret place is where we meet with God one-on-one. -on -one. It's where we should find ourselves often. See, we need to be alone with God. It's important, saints, that we seek the Lord. Psalm 91.1-2 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Abiding in God, we find shelter, refuge, and fortress. It is the secret place that we are most vulnerable with God and most deeply experience His intimate love. Children, you are being hidden and prepared for God's purpose, not man's. That's what I heard God say. See, God is preparing you for His purpose, not man's purpose, for God's purpose. And the favorite, my favorite part of the Psalms is, uh, I mean, the favorite part of the Bible is the Psalms. You know, David had a heart after God. I'm going to read you Psalm 91. I love this Psalm. I've read it several times. Whoever, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Verse 4, He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the air that flies by day. See, God does not want you and I to fear, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. And we're seeing more and more of these plagues that are, are coming about. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, 
No harm, verse 10, will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Amen? That's, you know, God will protect you and I. If we're walking with the Lord, he will protect us. Verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike their foot against the stone. Verse 13, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. For acknowledges my name, he will call on me and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Whatever storm that comes your way in mind, God will protect us and keep us safe. That's right, saints. God will keep you and I safe. He said to me, Jesus will hide us in the cleft of the rock. Just like the Bible says. We can trust God's presence to be with us in the storm. I like what God said in Moses in Exodus 33, 12 through 23. I'm not going to read you all this. You can read it in your spare time. Exodus 33, 12 through 23. I'm going to jump down to 21. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. Verse 20. So it shall be. While my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you in my hand while I pass by. See, God will protect us, saints. He will keep you and I hidden in the secret place. All right? When God is finished with you, God will take you out of hiding. You're asking him, when, God, when? I know because I've asked him several times. He's not going to let you out of hiding until he's ready to anoint you and use you for his glory, not man's. Everyone wants to be used by God. The question is, are you willing to pay the price for God to use you? Are you willing to take up your cross and deny self? Now, we've said this before. I've read it several times. Remember, Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. See, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. What is Jesus doing in this time? All right, maybe you're a pastor, you're a preacher, or a teacher, you're a prophet. You know, and you're going here, you're going there. Are you asking God, what is it you want to do in this hour? Maybe you're speaking to your congregation. You need to ask God, what is it you want me to say? Well, how do you want me to, to get my people ready for what's coming? Okay, if you're not willing to speak the truth, it's time you get out of that pulpit and let somebody else that is willing to step up to the plate and speak out. If you're too afraid and you don't want to do what God is asking you to do, you need to get out. I'm going to tell you right now. If not, God's going to get you out. God will either shut your church down or he'll place somebody else up there that will speak the truth that is not afraid. You and I cannot be afraid of man these last days. All right? We've got to stand and do what God is asking us to do because we're all going to stand before them. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're this big pastor, world known, everyone knows who you are. You're going to stand before God and he's going to say to you, what did you do? Did you do what you wanted to do or did you do my will? What are you doing with your life? We're all going to give an account. This is very serious. Okay, you may be alive here and I may be alive. But we're all going to go home one day, and we're going to stand before the Lord. Some may go home quicker. If they're not doing God's will, he, he might take you out of here. I pray I, that don't happen to me. God knows my heart. I want to do as well. Okay? But you know what? We're not perfect. God knows our heart. He loves us, and I believe he knows. He knows everything. Okay? We can't fool God. Okay? We may fool man, but we can't fool God. So we've got to be honest with God. We've got to tell him there are things we're struggling with. We've got to go to God and say, God, I can't do this anymore. I need you to help me. And just be honest. Take the mask off our face and just be who God created us to be. God wants us to be ourselves. That's what's happening in the church. Okay? We try to be something we're not. Take the makeup off. All right, it's going to come off anyways, I told you. You know, God showed me that. Are we get, we're putting on all this makeup. Where are we crying tears? It's going to run down your face. Quit trying to be something you're not. Just be who God created you. I don't care how fat thin you are. Be who you are. God loves you for who you are. And it doesn't matter what gifts you've got. We've all got different gifts. Stop being jealous of that person. they got some other gift you don't have. Pray for them. Love them. Let's work together as a body of believers because you know what? That's what God wants us to do. Use our gifts together. 
in the work of the Lord. He's giving all of us separate gifts, okay? So we need to embrace those gifts. We all need one another. No gift is more important than the other. We need one another. All right. So I'm reading this scripture, Matthew 16, 24 to 26. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Then Jesus told his disciples, see, Jesus said this. I didn't say this. He said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for a soul? If you want God to use you and be a disciple of the Lord, Jesus said it out of his own mouth. You must deny himself. See, we've got to deny ourselves. And that's not easy. I'm going to tell you right now. It's not about what you and I want. It's about what does God want. All right? And we've got to do God's will, whether we want to or not. And that's hard to accept. All right? Remember Matthew 10, 37, 39. No, I've said this before. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worth me. See, we can't love people more than God. We've got to put God first. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worth me. He who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worth me. He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. See, we can't love our daughters, our sons, our mothers, fathers, even our husbands, our wives more than God. God has got to be number one. I'm going to tell you right now, we need to pray. We need to pray for our family members. And we need to pray that we all do what's right in these last days. Because I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to see a falling away, even in families. I believe that. We're going to see that. And we've got to stand strong. We've got to do what God is asking us to do. Can't love your family more than God to where you compromise your Christianity to please that other person. See, that's what's happening. We are compromising. We cannot compromise our Christianity. No, you have to make a stand. You're going to follow the Lord at all costs. Yes, that will hurt. Pray for your loved ones. That is all we can do is love them and pray for them. When it comes down to it, we're all going to stand before the Lord and give an account. I've said this before. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Times are changing, saints, so we must change and bend with God. He wants us to stop being stubborn like the mule. Ha! Are we stubborn? I know at times I am. I'm Italian. I'm stubborn. Hey, maybe you're stubborn. Psalm 32, 9. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bridle, else they will not come near you. That's Psalm 32, 9. God is telling me, that there are those who are stubborn and want their own way. Hey, maybe I'm talking to you. Hey, I'm like that. I want my way. It's not going to be our way. It's going to be God's way or the highway. I'm going to tell you right now. God always gets his way in the end. And Father, I just pray this right now that you help all of us yield and cooperate with the Spirit of God, not be unyielding. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, God told me that earlier, that we have got to cooperate. You know, if one's not cooperating, you know, God's plan for your life and my life can change. I'm being honest. God showed me that. If we're not willing to cooperate with God and do what he's asking us to do, it can change. So we need God to help us to cooperate. You know, I wrote this poem. I want to read it to you. I just wrote this the other day. Do not be stubborn like the horse. Are you stubborn like the horse? Stay on course. Stop fighting to get your own way. Yield to Jesus, I say. Jesus came to earth and died for all. He took the great fall. In the end, Christ always wins. Jesus' blood covers all our sins. Stop being stubborn, says the Lord. Yield yourselves to the Lord if you want more. Take up your cross daily. Carry no strife. You must die to the world. Lose your life. That means put God first, not your father, mother, husband, children, or wife. When it's all said and done, you will not answer to anyone. The only one that matters is what God thinks of you. It does not matter what others say. You answer to God today. Life is fragile. Make the most of each day, each new day. Life is full of daily sorrow. God gives you another day to borrow. No one knows what will happen tomorrow. 
Hear one minute and then you're gone. Get your heart right with God. Clear all that is wrong. Say, dear Jesus, I'm sorry for letting you down. There is no more time for me to clown around. I repent of my ways. Forgive me, dear Lord. Please have mercy on me today, I pray. Amen. Maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe you're a backslidden Christian. You haven't been following God. Maybe you've been doing some stuff that's wrong. God sees your heart. All right? Just go to God and repent, and he'll put you back on track. And, you know, God knows. All right? None of us are perfect. We're all sinners saved by grace. I want to play this last song. All right. I love it. I've decided to follow Jesus. Make your decision, today, and then we're going to come back and pray. To follow Jesus, I have decided. Make your decision, they say. We're running out of time. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. No turning back. Amen. There's no turning back, saints. We got to put our, what, our hand to the plow. We got to go forward. We can't look back and be like Lot's wife when it turned back. There's nothing to turn back to. I'm telling you right now, we're seeing things are changing. Our world is dying. It's, it's dying is what it's doing. All right. So we've got to make a stand. Are we going to follow Jesus? Or are we going to follow the world? We have to come out from the world and be separate. Touch no unclean thing. And I'll receive you. That's what God said. We can't be acting like the world and trying to fit in the world. We've got to be who God created us to be. All right, I want to pray for all of us before we leave. And um, I don't know when I'll be back again. I told you, um, God's in control. I don't know when he's going to do something. I, I just keep my eyes on Jesus. That's all you and I can do. None of us know. Let's pray. Father, we just come together as a body of believers, Lord. We thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I pray for all of us Christians for this following week that you'll keep us safe, Lord. Protect your Lord. Put a hedge of protection over us, Lord. Um, 
just help us to follow you faithfully, Lord. Wash us and cleanse us in your blood, Lord. And um, we just, we ask, we need you, Lord. That's all I got to say. We need you. We can't do it on our own, Lord. So we look to you, Lord. We yield ourselves to you, Lord. I pray for those right now that are going through trials of their own, that they're struggling, Lord. They've got hurts and pains and they don't understand the things that they're going through. They're being distracted and they're having a hard time focusing on you, Lord. I pray for them, Lord, that you would help them, Lord. And, and they're seeing all that's going on. Maybe they've got fears and worries, Lord. I pray that you would help them not to worry, Lord. Lord, I also pray for those that are sick and body. We as a body of believers, let's pray, saints. Let's pray for all those that are sick right now. Father, we come together as a body of believers, Lord. I pray for them. I stretch out my hands. Just stretch your hands towards mine and just pray with me. Father, I pray for them right now that you would heal your people, Lord. Those that are sick right now in body, Lord, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed, whatever your sickness is. I command it to leave you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we're about to see miracles. Miracles are coming. Lord, we have faith, Lord. We do not doubt. We trust you knowing that you're going to do great things, Lord, beyond what we could ask or think, Father. We believe and have faith, Lord. We stand and believe, and we believe for doors to be open, Lord. There are Christians that I'm talking to that are waiting on you, Lord. They're, they're waiting, knowing that you're going to open up doors, Lord. We pray that you'd help us to persevere and stand fast, not give up, Lord. I pray that for your people, not to give up, Lord. Give them hope, hope, Lord. In Jesus' name, we need you, Lord. We can't do this on our own. We need your grace. We need your strength, Lord. And I ask you to be with us, Lord, as we take one day at a time. That's all you've asked us to do, Lord. You can't worry about tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow, we got to take each day as it comes, Lord. We thank you. And I ask you to go with us and be with us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Please pray for us. Please pray for me, you know, that I can speak. Because, you know, um, the enemy is attacking me so that I can't speak to you. And I need your prayers. Because there are th things I'm still going through. There's personal issues and things that God only knows. And he's in control. You know, I, I, I lay it all. I give it to God. And my life is in the Lord's hands. And that's all any of us can do is do our best. You know, that's all God's asking of us is to do our best. And, and I want you to know we love you and appreciate you. Until we meet again, this is Prophetess Dawn O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner. God bless you. Have a safe and blessed day.